In this video, I'm going to do three examples of finding a derivative using its definition. So the standard formula for the definition of a derivative is, remember we use f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So the first example we're going to do is for the function negative x squared plus 4x minus 3, find f prime of x and then find f prime of negative 1. So the f prime of x part is the part that's very time consuming. So if you look at the formula, you've got this f of x plus h portion and so we need to figure out what that is first. So we're going to find f of x plus h. Everywhere there is an x in the function, you replace it with x plus h. So we have negative x plus h squared plus 4 times x plus h minus 3. And then you have to FOIL out the x plus h squared. So we do that here, x plus h times x plus h. And then when you FOIL that out, you get x times x is x squared. Your outers are xh and your inners are xh. So you have an xh plus another xh, that's where you get this 2xh. And then the last are plus h squared. And then you distribute the 4, so you have plus 4x plus 4h minus 3. And then lastly, you have to distribute this minus sign. So you get negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus 3. That entire thing is what goes into the formula for f of x plus h. The f of x is just the original function. So if we take minus f of x, then what you're going to do is just change the sign in f of x on every term. So minus f of x makes this a plus, this a minus, and this a plus. So we have plus x squared minus 4x plus 3. So you change all your signs in f of x, and then in the numerator you put together what you found for f of x plus h, and your minus f of x, so that's what we're doing here, and you see which terms cancel. So we have negative x squared plus x squared, we have 4x minus 4x, and negative 3 plus 3. And remember what I said in class, every single term of the f of x has to cancel out or else you did something wrong. So what we are left with now from the numerator is this term, so the negative 2xh, this term minus h squared, and this term plus 4h. And if we went ahead and put the 0 in there, it would give us 0 over 0. So we know we need to factor out the h, so that's going to be negative 2x minus h plus 4, and now we can cancel out the h's so that we don't divide by 0 anymore. And so we end up with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2x minus h plus 4. And if this h right here is getting replaced with 0, then that all that's going to leave us with is negative 2x plus 4. So that is our f prime of x for this particular function. Then, if we move on to part b, finding f prime of negative 1, we just plug negative 1 into our derivative. So we have negative 2 times negative 1 plus 4, so that's going to be 2 plus 4 is 6. So that is f prime of negative 1. So that is the first example, and that's the easiest of the three examples we're doing. The second example, we're going to look at a rational function. So remember, for a rational function, you want to use this other form of the derivative definition. And all we're doing is instead of dividing by h, we're multiplying by the reciprocal 1 over h. And that's just going to make the rational functions easier to work with. So again, we need to find f of x plus h so that that can go in right there. So that's just negative 1 over, and we replace that x with x plus h. So we get negative 1 over x plus h plus 2. So that is our f of x plus h. Then again, we do minus f of x. So minus f of x, we're just going to have minus of whatever f of x was. And the negative of a negative makes that positive 1 over x plus 2. So that's our minus f of x. This was our f of x plus h. 
So then if we plug those into what's inside the brackets, f of x plus h minus f of x, we get negative 1 over x plus h plus 2, and then over here we get plus 1 over x plus 2. And in order to put those together, you need a least common denominator. And the LCD for these problems is always going to be the product of those two denominators. So the LCD is x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. So in order to combine those, we need to show um, or multiply by what's missing. So this one is missing x plus 2, so we multiply top and bottom by x plus 2. And this one is missing the x plus h plus 2, so we multiply top and bottom by x plus h plus 2. Now you have to take this negative 1 and distribute it through there. So we get negative x minus 2, and then this one distributes through there, so you got plus x plus h plus 2. And again, things are going to start canceling, so negative x plus x and negative 2 plus 2 cancel, so the only thing left in the numerator is that h. So now we have h over x plus h, or x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. So now let's try taking the limit of 1 over h times what we got inside of our brackets, which was h over x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. You can immediately see that the h is cancel, and so that's just going to give us this limit. If we replace the one and only h with a 0, then we get this. So 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 0 plus 2. Well, x plus 0 plus 2 is just x plus 2. So we have 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 2. And we can rewrite that as x plus 2 squared, which is what we get over here for our final answer. So we have 1 over x plus 2 squared. And then to answer part B, what is f prime of 3, you just plug 3 into your derivative in place of the x. So that would be 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. So that's our answer to our second example. Now for the third example. This one is a radical, f of x equals square root of x minus 7. We're going to go back to the original function, so the, the original definition of the limit, or of the derivative, so that's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So the first thing we need to do again is to find f of x plus h. And you just replace this x with x plus h, and it's just square root of x plus h minus 7. Then we need to find our minus f of x. So minus f of x, you just put a minus sign in front of that function, so there's our minus f of x. The numerator then is f of x plus h minus f of x right there. There's nothing to simplify. There are no like terms. So we go ahead and jump straight to the step where we try to find our limit. And when we do that, we have to replace this h with a 0 and this h with a 0, because every h gets replaced with a 0. And what happens when you do that is you end up with x plus 0 minus 7 is the same as just x minus 7. So the square root of x minus 7 minus the square root of x minus 7 is 0. And then over that 0 that was already in the denominator, we know that's undefined. Now normally when we get 0 over 0, we try to factor. But we know we can't factor this one, so instead, because we see all those, ra those uh, radicals, we know we're going to rationalize the numerator. So to rationalize, remember the only thing you change is the middle sign between the two terms. So I made that into a plus on the top and bottom, and then you FOIL it out. And the whole point is that the outers and the inners cancel. So you don't even need to worry about the outers and inners. All you need are the firsts and the lasts. And so when you multiply square root of x plus h minus 7 times square root of x plus h minus 7, it just leaves you x plus h minus 7. And when you take the square root of x minus 7 times square root of x minus 7, you get x minus 7. And then a negative times a positive is a negative. So we need to distribute that through. And what happens is we have this numerator becomes x plus h minus 7 minus x plus 7, so things start canceling here. We have the x minus x and the negative 7 plus 7, so the only thing left was the h, so that's where that came from. So now we can cancel out the h on top 
with the H on bottom and try our limit again. And so now we're just going to replace that 1H with a 0. Square root of X plus 0 minus 7 is just the square root of X minus 7. These are like terms. We've got one of these and one of these. So we add those up and we have two of them. And this is F prime of X.